we got that Wolverine buck right here in behind us. I just hit him with a grunt. He heard it. I'm shaking like I just shot him. Like they usually do, she only ran a little ways to stop and then look back and offer that perfect shot. third day of the bow season and I'm heading back for this evening's hunt in a spot where I had trail camera pictures of this big eight pointer that we filmed in the summer. And this is one of three deer that I've identified on the farm so far that are old enough to be what I would call shooter class bucks. I try to get to five and a half years old whenever I can. Sometimes we misjudge the deer because we don't really know that well but these bucks I'm pretty sure are at least that age. So it's this one, uh, this eight pointer, and there's one that we call the bladed 10. He's a deer we've got, we've got a lot of history with that deer. And then there's another one that we call the tube buck. And that's another deer that we've seen on the farm for several years. So tonight, uh, hopefully that eight pointer will show up. It's really cooled off a lot. The temperatures are probably 20 degrees cooler than they were yesterday. And uh, during October, we've learned that your best chances of getting bucks to show up in daylight is to catch them on these cold fronts. So we're heading back in with high hopes this evening. We're going to show you whatever happens back here at the stand, and then I'll close when we get done with this evening's hunt. Man, what a beautiful evening. We've been pretty well covered up with deer since we got in the stand. Nothing mature though, I think we've seen three bucks and like nine or ten does. But the Wolverine buck so far is a no-show. It's like 6.20 so we're just getting into prime time. I'm still hopeful. We'll set in here and see what happens. Listen to those old Canadian honkers. Familiar sound every fall, I love it. Man, what an awesome sit. We got to see our target buck. I feel like he's still right around here somewhere. He's just in that thick cover. Can't get much closer than that. He was over there about 60, maybe 70 yards. Right, he still might pop out. We got about 10 minutes left, but if anything happens, we'll show you. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow. Welcome back to Midwest Whitetail, guys. I just wanted to give you an update of what I've been up to. We've been hunting two bucks. We've got the Wolverine buck and the Picket Fence buck. You can catch that action at Midwest Whitetail Daily. And October 2nd, we went after the Picket Fence buck. Didn't see him that night, so then October 3rd, I went down and hunted the Wolverine buck, which we had a great hunt, a good encounter with him. A close call as you'll see but on October 3rd 
picket fence buck walked right by the blind we hunted October 2nd, 5 o'clock. So we just missed him by a day. So I think it's just a matter with these cool fronts, just putting your time in, making sure you make it out, and don't wait for daylight picks on these cool fronts because you might miss your opportunity. So that's what we're going to do coming up. We've got another cool front coming in, actually a cold front. This Thursday they're calling for more rain and then the bottom's going to drop out on the temperatures. It's going to be down in the almost 30 degrees I guess for a low and in the mid 40s for a high. So some big bucks are going to go down I've got a feeling. It's uh, one of those where you got to make it out any way possible. This weekend I had a really good hunt you know with this cold front that moved in. I had a couple excellent hunts. I know Josh Sparks did. He had a great hunt as well. I know this coming week we're going to concentrate on the two bucks, Wolverine and Picket Fence. We're going to just kind of bounce back and forth based on the wind direction and try and keep each area fresh. That's the key this time of year is don't put too much pressure on them, but when the weather conditions are right, you got to move in on them. So I feel like we could have got it done, just a matter of picking the right spot this weekend, and I feel like it'll be the same next week as well. We're in a very familiar spot, as I'm sure you guys can tell. This is the same bean field that I harvested my buck last year in the 2018 season. we got about three hours left. We're going to sit back and relax and uh, just take in and enjoy the first time of the year. I'll oh, shoot that deer. Oh my goodness. You want that? What an incredible way to start off the year. That was a stud. I mean, that was a shooter all day. Oh my gosh, I'm shaking like I just shot him. Well, we just snuck out of there, and um, man, I don't even know what to say about tonight other than it's a lot more than what we expected. We thought we might have a chance at a buck coming out early to work a scrape, but man, that stud came out. He came out with plenty of daylight left, and I don't even know how many deer we ended up seeing, but the main thing is obviously we didn't get a shot, so all those deer, we filmed them in infrared, they were 90, 100 yards away feeding in the beans. Well, hey guys, today's October 6th, Sunday, and I uh, was taking a quick break for making the show for tomorrow. And um, I just wanted to build off what everybody else has been talking about. You know, you just saw Owen talking about seeing Wolverine and uh, this cold front that went through Iowa last week really had, uh, you know, a lot of deer up on their feet. Max and I got pretty lucky. Um, you know, we just wanted to put ourselves in a position to hopefully encounter a mature buck. You know, our thought process was pretty simple. Um, I knew that a lot of deer have been bedding around there. Uh, you know, acorns, mass crop have been falling, and with those beans still there and three days of rain, I figured that we might have a good chance at a mature buck coming out to freshen up a scrape. It was definitely a welcome surprise to see a buck that big. So like Owen had mentioned, um, this coming week there's actually another really big front coming through, and I believe that's coming through on Friday. Um, Max and I definitely are going to, I think, take another shot at that bean field. Um, the wind sets up right, it's going to be high pressure and low temps. And that's definitely the three things you're looking for this time of year. So as far as that buck goes, I'm not necessarily set on him. I would love to see him again. Don't get me wrong, but I'm, you know, one thing I've learned hunting public lands to not get attached to one deer. You know, there's so many variables that are not in my control as far as him sticking there. You know, my goal is to just harvest a mature buck this year. Um, hopefully we can keep encountering them, but as far as picking one specific target, that's not really on my agenda. But the another exciting thing is Max is going to be getting his tag here pretty soon, so we'll have um, two buck tags in the tree, which, you know, if there's a buck that I don't necessarily want to shoot, Max is definitely going to have the um, option if he wanted to, but, you know, like Owen said, if you guys can get out this week, um, definitely give it a shot. I mean, it's going to be really good weather. You know, I can't remember a year that we had this many good cold fronts right away, but 
it's making for some really good hunting and uh, hopefully this coming week the guys can get on some bucks i know everybody's starting to get their stories rolling so appreciate you guys joining this week and uh, hopefully next week we can come back with some more action come on dude yeah Hey guys, it's uh, October 5th afternoon and uh, Tyler and I just snuck down to this redneck blind here on Bills to hopefully shoot a couple does tonight. One of the main reasons why I'm in here actually is because uh, none of my deer are showing up in daylight right now. Um, that deer I'm calling 50, he's only been on camera once in the past week and it was middle of the night. I'm going to play it safe on that farm and uh, you know probably only hunt it when it's exactly right. If we get a big cold front coming through, there's another big buck that I'm chasing. Uh, at a farm about an hour away from here and uh, he's flirting with daylight right now. I've got pictures of him at 8 p.m. the other night about a week ago um, and he's showing up quite a bit on this one fence line which I think is probably the northern part of his range. Um, so that farm kind of sets up um, when the crops get out those deer are kind of sucked down into the timber that I can hunt in the creek and I've got a couple food plots I've been working on in there too so hopefully I can catch him in there um, but like I said, I'm, I'm going to play that farm safe too and just kind of lay off until it, it gets right. The beans, the corn gets out of there. It'll definitely be better when the beans and corn get out of there. So we had a good couple days in Missouri uh, last week and opening night. We saw a couple young bucks, um, nothing mature yet, but um, our food plots are coming up. They're looking good. On quick plot, we've got it. I think it's been in the ground for four weeks now. So. Um, Definitely looking forward to getting back down there. We do have one deer showing up that's probably four or five years old. He's definitely put him on the hit list down there. So um, he's showing up in the middle of the night. So we'll try to keep running cameras, narrow his area down. So uh, it's a little bit after 3.30 right now. We're going to get settled in. Hopefully some does make their way into this little food plot down here. Well, we're down to about the uh, last 40 minutes or so. It's been real slow. I don't know, hopefully something else comes out and we'll bring that to you, but uh, if not, my schedule is going to kind of depend on Bill. Um, I'm filming him again this fall, so when he doesn't hunt, I'll try to get out to hunt. I know we've got a good cold front coming uh, next week. At the end of next week, I think it's supposed to be down in the 40s. So uh, hopefully I can get out. Keep checking back. I'll keep updating you guys as uh, I start to learn all these farms. You know, I've got permission on five different farms right now. So, um, you know, they all range from 50 acres to a couple hundred. So, and uh, all of them but one I've never hunted before. So it's kind of cool to figure out how the deer are moving on those farms and seeing what deer's on uh, which farm. So uh, I'll keep updating you guys as my season goes along and hopefully. Uh, you guys have some good luck this next week with this big cold front moving in. It was all good until she got right below us and started looking straight up at us. Then she saw us and spooked, but like they usually do, she only ran a little ways to stop and then look back and offered that perfect shot.
down to the last half hour of legal shooting time, the only two deer that have come out were the button buck and the doe. And ended up, ended up shooting that doe. But uh, something could still come out this evening. It's, it's really pretty. Uh, the wind is laid right down. Beautiful sunset. This is the time of year that we all look forward to. Just cool temperatures, probably in the lower 50s right now, I'd say. And it looks like the forecast is going to be good, you know, for, for hunting purposes for you know, several more days now. So I think, you know, we're going to hit it pretty hard. Uh, hopefully, we you know, get a chance to get out because I'd say this next week coming up uh, could be, you know, a pretty decent time in the field. If not, uh, to hunt bucks, at least to fill some doe tags. And we're going to do plenty of that too. So keep checking back and uh, we're going to bring you action not only here on the weekly series but also on the daily video blog. So check out the daily channel on YouTube or the daily video blogs on MidwestWhitetail.com. Well, I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big. <laughs>